I'm Teacher Neff, and welcome to our General Math Tutorials. I'm here to help you understand your lessons in Senior High School General Math subject. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and tap the notifications bell to keep you updated of our upcoming lessons. So let's start with relations. A relation is any set of ordered pairs, and the set of all first elements is what you call domain, while the set of all second elements is what we call range. Now, a function is a relation between the domain and range such that each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. We have set A. Its domain is the set of x elements negative 2, 0, and 7. Since there is no x element which is being repeated, therefore set A is function. Okay, we have set M. Its domain is the set of negative 1, 3, and 3. Since 3 is being repeated, therefore set M is not a function. So this time we have table of values. The first row refers to the domain, while the second row refers to the range. As you can see, there is no x element which is being repeated. Therefore, this also corresponds to a function. Given a mapping diagram this time, so as you can see, this is the set of domain, while the second one is the set of range. Each element in the domain is paired only once with each element in the range. Therefore, this my mapping diagram shows a function, and specifically, it is a one-to-one -one correspondence. This second mapping diagram also shows a function, since each element in the domain is being paired once with the elements in the range. But as you can see, both the elements x and z in the domain are paired with only one element in the range, which is b. Therefore, this is called as many-to-one correspondence. This next mapping diagram shows that element x in the domain is being paired twice with elements in the range a and b. Therefore, this is not a function and it's called as one-to-many correspondence. Lastly, this mapping diagram shows that though x and y are both being paired once with an element in the range, but then the element Z is being paired twice with elements B and C in the range. Therefore, again, it's not a function, and specifically, it's called as many-to-many -many correspondence. So, the relationships which are functions are one-to-one -one and many-to-one. How about if the given is a graph? How will we know if it is a function? Okay, we will be using the vertical line test. That is, once you draw a vertical line on the graph, it must intersect the graph at exactly one point only for it to be considered as a function. Otherwise, it's not a function. So let's see. Suppose we have these two figures or two graphs. Let's take a look at the first graph first. Let's draw a vertical line. Okay, it intersects the graph at exactly one point. Therefore, the first graph is a function. How about the second graph? When we draw a vertical line on the second graph, it intersects the graph at two points. Therefore, the second graph is not a function. A function can also be used to, to model real-life situations, just like that of the marriage where there is fidelity and loyalty. It shows one-to-one -one relationship and it depicts a function. Um, and function also involves two variables, independent and dependent variable. And between the x and y, x is usually the independent variable, while y is the dependent variable. Just like in the case of the equation, y equals x plus 5. In that case, x is the independent variable, and the value of y depends on the value of x. So y is the dependent variable. Now, in a function, y can also be expressed as f of x. So y equals 5 or y equals x plus 5 can also be expressed as f of x equals x plus 5. Okay? Write a function b representing the amount of battery charge of a cellular phone in each hour if 10% of the battery loses every hour. So what are the two variables here? First is 
number of hours. And second variable is amount of battery charge. So amount of battery charge represented by B is the dependent variable since it depends on the number of hours. So H or hour is, or the time, is the independent variable. So we're going to write the function B given that 10% um, of the battery loses every hour. So we have B of H or the number or the amount of battery charge is equal to 100% or 1 when converted into decimals minus 0.10 or 0 0.1 um, times H. Every hour, it loses 10%. So 1 minus 0 0.1 times H. Okay? So there are functions requiring more than one formula in obtaining the given output. And those functions are called as piecewise functions. For example, Lara bought a 150 peso load good for a month. It includes 100 free text messages. Messages in excess of this are charged 1 peso each. Give a function C of M representing monthly cost corresponding to the number of text messages M. So... There are two variables being discussed here. First is the number of text messages M, which is the independent variable. Second variable is C of M, or the monthly cost of Lara's load, which is the dependent variable since it depends on the number of text messages Lara sent. This situation involves two cases. First case is for sending messages of not exceeding 100, and second case is for sending messages of over 100. Okay, so we're expecting to arrive at two formulas for the monthly cost of Lara's load. For the first case, for sending messages of not exceeding 100. So, monthly cost C of M is equal to 150 if messages sent is greater than 0 but less than or equal to 100. Okay? That's for the first case. For the second case, for sending messages of over 100, monthly cost will become 150 plus M minus 100. This is how we represent messages over 100. If M is greater than 100. Okay? So, let's have an example. Say, for example, Lara sent 105 messages. So, what is her monthly cost? If M, if M, number of text messages Lara sent is 105, then what is C of M? Okay? So, M here is 105. 105 minus 100 is 5. Then 150 plus 5 is equal to 155. So we are expecting that her monthly cost is 155 if she sent 105 messages. Okay? And this second value of C of M can also be simplified into 150 minus 100 is 50 plus M. Okay? Let us see if uh, whether we will still arrive at 155. So 50 plus 105 is 155. Okay? So this situation involves piecewise function since it involves more than one formula. That's it. So that's it. Hope you have learned how to represent real life situations using functions. Until next time.